if you're like me and were raised in the US, you pretty much know who FDR is from day one. Hi there beautiful YouTube, it's Chloe G and welcome back to my channel Vintagely Yours. If you are new here, this channel is solely dedicated to the preserving and honoring and remembering of World War II civilian history because I am a reenactor of that era and I am trying to gain a clearer picture of everyday life so I can better portray it at reenactments. I'm so glad that you are here and I hope you stick around because the topic of today's video is FDR and his fireside chats. If you're like me and were raised in the US, you pretty much know who FDR is from day one. And you probably know about the fireside chats from your very first days in American history. Yeah, I actually thought that the fireside chats was something that he did once a week, every week, for the 12 years he was president. Everything goes back to me being a reenactor, so I knew that I had to dig a little deeper into this topic so I could gain a better picture of the era that I'm trying to portray. So that is what today's video is about and let's dig in. So historians uh, trace the very origins of a fireside chat to FDR's time as governor of New York State way back in the 1920s. They say that the predecessor of the first fireside chats was actually his third inaugural address as governor because it was aired on the radio. He did this because he thought that his opponents had the monopoly on the media of the day, which was the newspapers. So he wanted to speak directly to his electorate and tell them what he was doing in his own words. So now we need to fast forward to 1932. Um, when he is elected president of the United States and inherits the Great Depression. I'm not an economist, so I'm not gonna go into all the detail of hows and whys the Great Depression started, but in 1933, he faced a month-long series of bank crises in March. So he chose to close down the banking system on the 6th, and he created something called the Emergency Banking Act on the 9th, and at 10 p.m. on the 12th of March, he took to the radio to tell the American people why and how he did it. He spoke using an informal language, and just, it was a very homey speech, and it really calmed the people down, and so they went back to the banking system, and and somehow, again, I'm not an economist, so I don't understand it quite what went down, but in the end, they all ended up giving half of their money back to the banks and saved the American economy. So throughout his 12 years as presidency, FDR gives a total of 31 fireside chats, and the majority of them take place during the Great Depression. And in the very beginning, they weren't called fireside chats. Uh, this term has direct roots to a man named Stephen Early, who is FDR's uh, press secretary. And he said that the president felt when he did these chats, uh, these speeches, it was like he was at home by his own fire talking to some friends. A couple of radio executives took to this and they coined the phrase fireside chats, leaked it to the press, and later on FDR started calling them fireside chats. So he uses these speeches, these radio broadcasts, to track New Deal um, projects as he comes up with them and recruit new workers for the projects and just tracking the process as they go forward. But when World War II hits, he feels like he has to up his broadcasting to about one every three months. In the beginning, he didn't want to do too many of them because he didn't want them to lose 
their effectiveness, but now he has to keep an entire public informed about a war and everything that the government and the army are doing to uh, win this and save the world from evil. So he ups it up uh, to one broadcast every three months, and so that makes a, there a total of roughly about 12 broadcasts during the war. He begins the first one on December 9th, 1941, which is really a call to action because it's two days after the Pearl Harbor attacks, and there is some dispute about when they ended, but the last one, some historians say, was in January 1945, after the Yalta Conference, and three months before his death. So, just like uh, the fireside chats during um, the Great Depression, this is a huge morale uh, booster. He announced each fireside chat about one or two uh, weeks in advance so that people would know when to tune in to the uh, radio station and listen to him. About 70% of radio listeners listened to the speeches and I feel that this is kind of what unified the country during the war because we were all listening to our commander-in-chief all at the same time and really understanding because he used informal language his vision for the war and how he was going to win it. So that's all I have uh, for you today. A really brief overlook of FDR and his fireside chats. I know I always learn a lot researching these videos, so I hope that you enjoyed as much as I did preparing for this video. If you aren't already on my social media following me and you have Instagram, don't forget to hop on there and follow me at underscore vintagely yours 3945 and don't forget to like comment and surprise subscribe all that down below and i'll see you in my next video which will be a fun one bye Because he thought that his opponents had the monopoly on the social media and I need to see if this is the one please god that is just me postulating and you have Instagram don't forget to hop on there and follow me at underscore eventually yours 45 uh, four, uh, the, 